And good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. We appreciate it. Praise the Lord. And uh, welcome all of our folk that will be joining us by live stream as well. We appreciate that as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's open with the word of prayer today. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you have um, brought us to this place, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for this time around your word and in fellowship with your people. We believe you, Lord, that you will bless this time and you'll be honored in all that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Faith. Faith's going to come up here in just a minute. Come on. All right, well, she's going to help us. She's got a song that she likes real well, and she's going to help us sing it. She's going to, she's going to do it solo. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Here we go. Ready? Well, I will.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know there are <clears throat> there are two movies out, and I don't usually say, "Hey, uh, you gotta watch this movie." But you know, there's two movies out that's absolutely wonderful, and the first one is. God's not dead. Mm -hmm. There's three of them. All three of them. Yeah. Okay, well, just, anyway, he isn't dead. He's alive. Amen. Amen. He's really alive. And when you get that in your heart, and you can't let it go. It just keeps going. Amen. All right. What are the other two movies? God's <laughs> not dead, one, two, and three. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And The Sound of Freedom. I like that one. Yeah, that's a different story. That's a different story.
of the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Thank you. Down in my heart to stay. And I love that peace.
Set my spirit free that I might worship thee, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence if you're not. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just want to apologize for the songs, if you look. Uh, not only are they the wrong songs, but they're not centered. I blame that on Anne. No. <laughs> She's probably listening. But I don't know what happened. Sorry. That's fine. In case you didn't, if you are listening, Anne, you didn't pick that up at the microphone. Alan blamed you for the errors in the code. <laughs> oh, I don't know, brother. Okay. <laughs> She'll be happy. <laughs> Amen. Why is it always the woman? <laughs> That's what Anne says. And so did Eve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there, you know, Joyce Sand and I have been married a long time, and there is a secret to longevity in marriage, and I'm going to let you know just a bit of it. In our house, we just made an agreement, and she, you know, we, 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 we both settled on this. If I will admit I'm wrong, she'll agree with me. <laughs> um, so. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, Love really... truly is blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, anyway, I, I, I was going to make another funny, but I'll, I'll leave it alone. Anyway, praise the Lord. All right. Amen. Anybody have a word of testimony? You want to lift up the Lord today in testimony? Anybody? Is there a word of testimony? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> God's been good to me no matter what, even though I realize I really don't deserve it. And I probably pick on myself more than I should, but because of that, I know that I'm not perfect, but I put on Christ. Amen, and brother. when the Father sees his Son in me, that's right. I'm seen as okay. That's right, brother. Amen. Amen. And none of us, absolutely none of us have arrived. None. So we're, we're, but we're, but we're on the way. Amen. All right. Anyone else with a word of testimony? Yeah, I thank the Lord. Uh, last week, James and his crew had to work nights. And days, it can be crazy with his job. At mm -hmm. nights, it can even be crazier. Mm -hmm. Nobody sure. was hurt. They were all safe. So I have found, you know, that... Uh, Shall we say, a special breed comes out at night? Shall we say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why Walmart here in town stopped being 24 hours. Really? Yeah. That, that and the labor thing. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah they... Um, Personally, and, I can testify that, that overnights at Walmart. Yeah. Special... It's come out. Now, 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 I, I, you know, I, I worked on the crew setting up this new store in town, mm -hmm. and uh, let me tell you something. During the day, some special folks come out too, but, but they're really anyway. special at night. <laughs> Aren't we glad that the Lord loves those special? Yes, exactly. yes, He does. It's because we're all special yes. in some way or another. So, yeah. all right, all right, and uh, yeah. So anyway. We praise the Lord for that. Amen. Anybody else with a word of testimony? My associate is doing better with the chemo. Is starting to take it. Wonderful. Back, so. so it's not starting to turn around. That's awesome. Oh, that's wonderful. We've had an associate that, uh, of, of Amy's that uh, been praying for for a while now. And she just said that the chemo is starting to help and things are starting to turn around. So that's, that's awesome. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Anybody else with e either a testimony or a prayer request today? James? Continue to keep my mom in prayer. I'm not sure exactly. She's not filling me in on all the details. All right. You can believe God for James' mother. Amen. Anybody and I, else? And I still need uh, prayer for finding out. I go see another dermatologist on Tuesday mm -hmm. to find out what's been going on with my scalp. Um, I have no idea. The doctor doesn't know any anything, and and it's really 
it's a problem. Um, and healing in my whole body, some other things have kind of trying to rear their ugly heads and I'm just saying, no, I am healed. I am bought yes. with Christ and there's yes. more. And I feel as though when I prayed with Katie quite a while back, she said it was unnatural, meaning I think it's more spiritual and mm. nerves oh, no. and um, stress than mm. anything else, along yeah. with the other things going on. So I really need prayer because I'm tired of seeing doctors who are blowing me off. Amen, sister. Well, let's believe God for that. Amen. Anyone else with a, a prayer? You want to pray for Noah? That uh, now is, is he having a surgery tomorrow? Is that what you said? Yeah, tomorrow morning, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. We want to pray for Noah and and, and I think that I think they're on the way to Iowa City, right? There so, should be. Yeah. Should, yeah. Okay. Should be. Anyway, Soon. we want to pray for their safe travels and just a, a successful surgery for Noah, and he'll be, he'll be taken care of. Amen. Anyone else with a prayer request before we pray? Let's just put that whole Williams thing underneath Jesus' feet and say, done. Amen. That's right. Amen. Go ahead. Um, I think we should pray for our families in general. Yeah. Um, Satan is really trying his very best to get at them. <coughs> and uh, those that are saved, he is trying so hard hard to get them to come to his side, so to speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. well, with our prayers, they're not going to do it. Amen. We're going to keep praying. And pray for Danielle, my granddaughter. Thank you, Lord, that she, uh, nothing bad happened evidently when uh, she <coughs> took off to New Orleans, but she's back in Iowa. I'm just praying for salvation, intervention, for both of my granddaughters and my daughter. As Joyce said, I was saying about families. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Um, I'd also like to have prayer for, uh, is it, uh, it's Taylor that's overseas. He's on the way back. Yeah. He's on the way back. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spent how long over there? Well, he was over there the whole, whole school year over in Korea. Yeah, he was teaching uh, who? Uh, so I think he was teaching English. I'm not positive. He was English, teaching English and the kids. Yeah. And anyway, I pray that nothing comes against him or hurts him or uh, just I plead the blood of Jesus over him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else with a prayer request just before we pray today? Brother? Benji's in South Korea, as far as I know. He's supposed to be. And I was, you said South Korea, so yeah. Amen. Amen. It, it's, uh, South Korea is better than North Korea, but that's anyway, that's another story. But, but I pray so far. Anyway, all right. Well, let's pray today. Father, we want to thank you that you are a good God. That you, uh, that you hear us every time we pray, you hear us. Lord, we know that. And Lord, we just bring these requests before you. We bring Noah to before we bring Ann and Noah as they travel to Iowa City. Lord, just bless their trip, safe journey to and from, and just a safe, successful surgery for Noah in the name of Jesus. That healing works in his body. Lord, that he is the healed, he is the restored in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank, we pray for Benji as well in South Korea. Father, we pray for our grandson Taylor as he travels back, that we just believe for safety for these, yes. these young men. Yes. And Lord, we just pray for Kara, Lord, that you will give the dermatologist she, she, see, uh, she sees insight so they can diagnose what's going on and also the spiritual aspect. We take authority over it. And we believe, Father, for healing to come to her body. And we pray for Jane's mother, Lord, that you would just continue to work in her. Lord, you know exactly what's going on. We rejoice in these testimonies that we heard today. We thank you that you are working, Lord, that you are not only hearing prayer, but you're answering prayer. 
and things that are being done. We pray for our families in general, and we claim them for the kingdom of God. We believe that we live in an hour where families and prodigals are coming home. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, Father, and we give you thanks for it. We believe you to work in these matters, everyone, in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to worship the Lord with our giving today, and uh, we are at fourth Sunday already, and that is general expenses, anything not designated tithes or otherwise is general expenses on fourth Sunday, so as we worship the Lord with our giving, keep keep that in mind, I'm going to have you place something because I, I realize I forgot to get the cross on today, so I'm going to do that. Oh. So we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. Amen. I believe the Lord. Chapter 6. Amen. 
Judges chapter 6. Now, just to give you the setting here. The setting here is in the time of the Judges. And as one studies through the book of Judges, a clear pattern emerges. Now, the people of God sinned. That is, they transgressed the law of God. They removed themselves from under the umbrella of the protection of the covenant. And when they do, the oppressor shows up. And then they cry out to the Lord, and the Lord would send them a judge. That is a pattern that goes throughout the entire book. Now, this time, the oppressor is the nomadic Bedouin tribe known as the Midianites. These were long enemies of God's people, and along with the Amalekites, another disorganized tribe, by the way, had oppressed Israel in the past. Dr. J. Vernon McGee, in his Through the Bible commentary, has a good note about this. He says, and I quote, the Midianites and the Amalekites moved as a disorganized tribe. They were raiders. They would raid the crops and supplies of others. They generally took their families with them. In fact, they took all that they had with them. They would pitch their tents as they moved along. In this incident, we are not given numbers concerning them because no one in the world would have been able to number them. They were so disorganized. But by sheer numbers, and they were many, they overwhelmed the inhabitants of the land. The children of Israel fled from their homes and lived in caves and dens. There is abundant evidence in the land of Israel today that they lived in caves, especially during the period of the judges, unquote. Now, look at verse 1 of chapter 6 of Judges. The Bible says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Now, delivered there, in our King James Version, could be bestowed or entrusted. He bestowed or entrusted his people into the hands of Midian for seven years. And listen, God had a redemptive purpose here. I want you to know that God is in the redemption business. Even in judgment, if God moves in judgment, and he does, and he will, but even if God moves in judgment, there is a redemptive underlying purpose that it will bring people to repentance. Amen. That's what God wants. I mean, if you know, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. How many? Any. Any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Now, even though Israel sinned and stepped out from under the protective hand of God, they never left the parental heart of God, nor were they ever out of his watchful eye. Hallelujah. I want you to notice first here the missing piece, and I speak peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, the missing piece. Look at verses 2 through 6 there. And the Bible says, And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel, made them the dens which, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that after the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass, of course, ass donkey. For they came and up, up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. Verse 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Amen. Now, in these verses, that's why I said 
This is the, the missing piece, P-E-A-C-E. In this, these verses, we see what the absence of shalom looks like. Now, I, I, I don't have a lot of time to get into this, but Hebrew words are built on and grow out of roots. And usually those roots are three consonants. And you can do a lot of things with those three consonants. You can add vowel sounds. You can have, add adjectives. There's a lot of things you can do with those consonants. But the three consonants or the root will always remain. Now, in the case of a word like shalom, shalom comes from the root shalem. Now, that is, shalem means to be complete or whole, nothing missing and nothing broken. Now, I want you to know that Israel was not in shalom here. So what happens with, I wanted to say this about, about the word shalom, though, comes from that root shalem, and what, what happens when to make that word shalom, you just add the bob, and the bob becomes a vowel sound, becomes shalom, and so we know that shalom is the peace that comes from nothing missing and nothing being broken. Now, Israel was not in shalom here. Why? Because they were broken. Everything was missing. Their lives were incomplete. Their lives were in shambles. They were living in caves, fleeing for their lives. But I want you to notice verse 6. Verse 6 says, and Israel was greatly impoverished. Greatly impoverished. Now, greatly here is to have something in abundance and exceeding amount. What did they greatly have? What did they have in abundance? What did they have a lot of? Well, because of the Midianites, they had a lot of poverty. They were, the Bible says, greatly impoverished. Now, impoverished there is a word that means to be brought low, weakened, caused to fail, made thin, or emptied. And I got to thinking about this. You know, some things have come into the English language, we're not even sure why they did, but they have a biblical root. You ever said to yourself, or maybe heard somebody say, you walk up to somebody, and you say, hey, would you like to go to the movies tonight? No, I can't. I'm broke. Or, would you like to go maybe out to eat tonight? Oh, I can't, because I'm broke until payday. I'm broke. I'm broke. Hey, that's what, that's what was going on in Israel. They were broke. And when you're broken, you're not whole. So when you're broke, you're not living in shalom, you're not living in peace. And I really felt impressed to bring this next part. I don't want to take a lot of time with it, but I think it's important. See, because a lot of people, you, know, you, you ever heard that old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places? Mm -hmm. uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. Well, I got to tell you, there's a lot of people that are looking for peace today in all the wrong places. Amen. Now, the world offers a pseudo-peace. What's a pseudo-peace? A pseudo-peace is a false peace. Now, there have been various peace movements through the years. A Wikipedia article offers a description of the world's peace movements. Quote, a peace movement is a social movement which seeks to achieve ideals such as the ending of a particular war or wars or minimizing interhuman violence in a particular place or situation. They are often linked to the goal of achieving world peace, unquote. But see, here's the problem. Mankind can never have real or lasting peace apart from God. You see, you can't have peace with one another until you are at peace with God. 
That's the bottom line. The Bible says there is no peace, there is no shalom, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. That's Isaiah 48, 22. The prophet Isaiah also said there is no peace, there is no shalom, saith thy God, my God, to the wicked. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Here's the formula. No God, no peace. No God, no peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, interestingly enough, and I really wanted to add this part. The peace movement of the 50s and 60s, some of you and may remember that, and I do. The peace movement of the 50s and 60s, even into the 70s, had a popular peace symbol. You've probably seen it, right? It had a peace symbol. Now, while the original design for the so-called peace symbol is typically traced to the design created by professional designer Gerald Holtham, a design which he completed, by the way, on February 21st, 1958, the symbol we find, if we do a little research, really isn't so new at all. In fact, it has been associated with anti-Christian sentiments and satanic rituals since the first century. Yep. At various times, it has been called the broken cross, crow's foot, witch's foot, Nero's cross, sign of the broken Jew, and symbol of the Antichrist, even. Yep. It also has roots associated with the ancient Germanic rune of death. See, that's why I say that the world offers a pseudo-peace. But I want you to know that peace can only be found with a relationship with God. You will never have real and lasting peace in the world and with each other until a person is at peace with God. Now, I said all that to say this. Getting back to Judges 6, secondly, we see the mission of the prophet. Look at verses 7 through 10. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. I want you to know something and listen to me. In God's mercy, in God's mercy, he will often allow you to be brought to the end of yourself. He will allow you to come to the end of all your efforts, all of your trying, all of your efforts, and all of your planning, and all of your scheming. He will allow you to come to the end of yourself. Why? Again, it's that redemptive purpose so you will cry out to him. Just like, the Midi, just like the children of Israel did because of the Midianites, they came to the end of themselves. They got so tired of their circumstances. They got so sick and tired of being sick and tired that the Bible says once again, they cried unto the Lord. Yeah, it had come to that. <laughs> See, the prophet's message was a reminder. It was a wake-up call. You know, just yesterday, I was, Joyce Ann and I were riding in the car, and I said to her, I said, you know what? There's, and we were talking about some things. And I said, there's an awful lot of people in the world who think that what we believe is nothing more than a, a fairy tale. 
They think it's not, nothing more than wishful thinking. They think it's nothing more than pie in the sky and a sweet by and by. They think that what we believe is we, we, we've placed our faith in, 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 in something that really isn't real. And I told, I told her, I said, you know, I said, if I come to the end of my life and it is revealed that everything I've believed Everything I've stood for, everything I've preached and taught was nothing but a farce. I would have no regrets. Let me tell you something. Here's what also I said. We got to reminiscing through the years of all the things. And this is just a few of them. Our uh, son, Jim, I don't know, maybe he's with us today via live streamer. I'll see this later, but he remembers this. When he was first learning to drive, he uh, he was about sixteen. He was about sixteen. Yeah. He had a he had a habit. I don't know why he did it. He would pull forward in front of the house, and then he would back up and park. I don't know why he did that. But that's what he did. <laughs> now you got to understand. This was the early nineteen eighties. Okay. I'm not, we lived in a little bitty town that was six blocks square. <laughs> you could go any direction you wanted, it was six blocks. Okay? And uh, I'm not saying this was the wisest thing to do. But how many of you know that most of us here today come from an era where you didn't have seatbelts? Mm -hmm. Come on. Where you drank out of the garden hose. Yep. Come on. Where he even ate chips of lead paint. Ooh, yeah. Come on. And 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 we rode in the back of pickup trucks. Yes. And they're still here alive to tell about it. Yep. All right? Like out in the rain. Uh, now, I, I could comment on today's generation compared to that, but I won't. But here's the deal. I said all that to say this. We had let the kids. We opened up the trunk of this big car we had and let the rest of the kids set in the trunk while we ran, drove down the alley from my in-laws. Our house was just down the alley yeah. from them. Three blocks. Three blocks. And uh, so one day, they're riding in the back of the trunk. We pull up, Jim's driving. He pulls in front of the house. Kids are in the trunk. And he backs up. But when he did, we heard, ah! Uh, and, and you can hear, check this out, you can hear kids under the car. Oh, oh. Yes. yes. <clears throat> okay. So we... We, we, we sat cried. there in horror. He sat there in horror okay. in anticipation of how awful it was in this big car rolling over these kids. And the next minute after we prayed, I promise you this happened. They were standing by the tree, completely uninjured. Yep. Now, talking about I'm talking about things that happened that couldn't be anything but God. Yep. Amen. But, All right. Now watch this. We were coming home one night from Iowa City, past Brother Allen, Iowa City, and uh, it was pure ice. Mm. We're driving along. We've gotten home you know, doing real well. Got, got, got just about home, and there was this curve on Highway 141. We were going around it, and I looked ahead of me, and there was this old green pickup truck that was all rusty and dented and beat up, scratched, scratched. Yes. And it was. I thought I thought he was doing a a, a, a left turn, and I said. That guy better get turned because I, I can't stop suddenly. He's just sitting there, it looked like. Mm -hmm. Then I realized he was sliding sideways oh, down the highway oh. right toward me. Yes. And we're going, what are you going to do? And so I keep going, and he gets closer and closer and closer and closer. And you looked up, and you could see every dent, every imperfection. You could mm -hmm. see every bit of rust. I mean, the truck was right there. And we closed our eyes, which I wish we hadn't, and said, Jesus, embraced for impact. <laughs> and, and, and opened my eyes. No impact. We're going down the road, and that truck was sitting on the side of the road facing the direction he had just come from. 
Mm. We kept going home, got home safely. I'm talking about things that couldn't happen unless it's God. Amen. And, 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 and one day, I got up out of bed and, and I heard right down here in my spirit. I didn't dream it up. I heard right down here on the inside, take a different route to work today. Somebody said, well, you could have imagined that. Well, I came downstairs. I had, I had not, I had not uh, talked to Joyce Ann about it. And as soon as I got downstairs, she said, hey, take a different route to work today. Yes. I'm talking about things that can happen just because it's God. There was one more, and i got to hurry, I know. But there was another time when uh, I had an insurance bill due. I think it was... $35.36, something like that, some odd amount like that. Now I think about auto insurance, 35 36 oh man. That's been a while ago. But uh, that's been a while ago. Yeah. But anyway, I, uh, I had ran out of money before I ran out of month. Hmm. You ever done that? Oh, ran out of money before I ran out of month and I was gonna have that auto insurance canceled and, and, and we prayed and, and, and then it came to the day, it was the very last day I could have made payment without facing cancellation, and I get this letter in the mail. It was from a brother I hadn't seen in months at that time. I hadn't talked to him. In fact, to this day, I'm not entirely sure he got our address, and it was, unless it was out of the phone book. I don't know. But anyway, he sends this letter. And he says, brother, two weeks ago, and this, was, this is how long this thing had been going on with the insurance for two weeks. He said, two weeks ago, the Holy Spirit told me to send you this money, and I just didn't obey, and I hope it's still in time and I can help you. And it was for $35.36. Exactly. You don't, I mean, I'm talking about things. And so I told her, I said, you know what? There are too many things that have happened. That's just a sampling, all right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the, yeah. there are too many things that have happened through the years that I can't call them coincidence. They've got to be God. Yes. Huh? Amen. they got to be God. Amen. I'm telling you. So that's what this prophet did. He said, hey, you know what God did for you? You need to remember And he brought you out of Egyptian bondage. He brought you through the desert. He brought you into the land and he told you not to worship the gods or fear the gods of the Amorites, but you didn't obey. He wanted to tell them that what had happened and what they did and he gave them the word. No wonder the word is likened to a mirror. You can look in it and see your true condition. You can think you look pretty good in the morning until you look in the mirror. Come on. You can think you look pretty good in the morning until you look in the mirror, but that's what they did. See, God was about to raise up another deliverer in the person of Gideon. But before he did, they needed to understand exactly what brought them to the place they were at. It wasn't that God had forsaken them. It wasn't that God had forgotten them. It wasn't that God did anything, but they stepped out of his the umbrella of the covenant through sin and somebody says i don't know why god would would send the midianites against them listen the midianites were already there and, and it's just like when it's raining you have an umbrella you have an umbrella and it's raining and you decide you're going to step out underneath the umbrella maybe and hold it over here and you're standing there getting soaked, wondering why the umbrella is not protecting you, but it's because you stepped out from underneath that protection. The rain was already falling. It was the umbrella that was keeping it off you, and it was the covenant that the people had with God that kept the rain of oppression off of them, and when they stepped out under it through sin, guess what? They got wet. Well... They had to know where they were and why they were. But then we have lastly here, the meeting at the press. <laughs> Look at verse 12. The meeting at the press. And, uh, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, that is Gideon, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now, 
If you understand where Gideon was at this time and what Gideon was doing, that, that was quite a statement to say about Gideon. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. If not, I sent thee. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If I now have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee. Until I come unto thee and bring forth my present, that is my meat offering, as it says in the margin, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes and an ephah flour. The flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock. And pour out the broth, and he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord. Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God! For behold, I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace, shalom, be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it is yet in Ophrah of the Abba Israelites. Whoo, hallelujah. Now watch this. The meeting at the press, and I've got to hurry here, I know when I speak of the press, I refer to the wine press where we find our man, Gideon. Dr. McGee offers another insightful observation. He says, quote, Gideon is not introduced to us as a hero or an outstanding man. Do you know what he is doing? He is threshing wheat by the wine press. Now, the wine press is the key to this entire situation. You see, in that day, the wine press was always put at the foot of the hill because they brought the grapes down from the vineyard. Naturally, they would carry the heavy grapes downhill. They carried them to the lowest place. In contrast, the threshing floor was always put up on the top of the hill, the highest hill that was available, in order to catch the wind, which would drive the shaft away. Here we find Gideon down at the bottom of the hill threshing. Now that would be the place to take the grapes, but that is no place to take your crops in order to do your threshing. Can you see the frustration of this man? <laughs> Why doesn't he go to the hilltop? Well, he is afraid of the Midianites. He does not want them to see that he is threshing wheat, and you can imagine his frustration. There is no air getting to him down there, certainly no wind. So he pitches the grain up into the air, and what happens? Does the shaft blow away? No. It comes down around his neck and gets into his clothes, making him very uncomfortable. There he is, trying his best to thresh in a place like that, and all the time rebuking himself for being a coward, afraid to go to the hilltop. I think he looked up there rather longingly and thought, do I dare go to the hilltop? Gideon was having a very frustrating experience, but God was going to use this man. Unquote. The Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to me. Now, angel of the Lord, angel is the Hebrew malach, which corresponds to the Greek Greek, angelos. It is in both cases referring to an envoy or messenger. So an envoy or messenger of the Lord appeared to Gideon. In fact, 
This label, the angel of the Lord, is often interchanged with God or other names of God. This figure who appears to Gideon can be understood to be both the angel of Yahweh, God, and Yahweh himself. In fact, I think that what happened here was that both the Father, now you have to understand that he would have veiled his glory, and we'll say more about that in just a moment, but this was both what we refer to in theology as a theophany and a Christophany. Isn't those, aren't those words impressive? Theophany and a Christophany, what's that mean? It means God and a, a, a it means God and Christ who appeared here before taking on flesh as he did in the New Testament, both appearing to Gideon. To Gideon. Now, he was come to call a coward to do a heroic thing. Now, so, you know, in, in the natural, human beings wouldn't seek out a coward to do something heroic. Uh -huh. But you see, what God does, listen, God calls according to his plan and according to his purpose, not the call's present position. He calls knowing what he is going to put in you, knowing what he has equipped you with, knowing what he is going to empower you to do, not looking at your weakness. In fact, I like my, my dear brother, Vern Starling, who moved to heaven a, near, a number of years ago. He used to say this. He would say, God's biggest game in town is to bring strength out of weakness. Amen. Amen. You've heard it said that God does not call the equipped, but he does equip the call. He had, he had called Gideon to do a great work. Now, once Gideon figures out what is going on here, he's terrified. Why? Because he knows he has seen God, and he knew the Torah says that no one can see God and live. He figures he's going to die. That's why I said God, revealed, God veiled his glory. He didn't see God in his full glory. He, God veiled his glory so a human being could look on him. That's what he did in the person of Christ. That's why Jesus took on flesh to veil his glory, but he never lost his glory. All right. Now, when there is fear... And dread, the Lord spoke peace. When you come into a place where you have fear and you have dread, we need to speak peace too. Mm -hmm. but, but, but he spoke peace. He, there was fear on Gideon. There was dread. He thought he was going to die. The Lord said, uh, said, said peace be to you. And that is why the Gideon built an altar and called it Jehovah Shalom or Yehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. Woo. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that, that at, at, at a period of time, that altar was still there. Why did they build altars? They built altars to commemorate some great meeting with God. And Gideon built this altar to commemorate the appearing of God to him when God spoke peace to his fear and he called the place Jehovah Shalom. Listen, I got to conclude here. But in God's mercy, under the judge Gideon, in exchange for seven years of oppression, think about this, God gave 40 years of peace. You talk about taking back what the enemy stole. You talk about turning a situation around. For seven years of oppression, all the time of Gideon's life, God gave peace to his children for 40 years. I want you to know something. God's will, God's will is that we as believers live in shalom with nothing broken and nothing missing. Now, have we arrived at it perfectly yet? No. 
Does it belong to us? Yes. Here's what I'm personally going to do. And I would recommend you do the same. I am going to keep pressing in. I'm going to keep pressing forward toward the prize, toward the high call of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to keep trusting God. I'm going to forget what is behind. And that includes, by the way, past failures and past victories as well. I'm not going to live in those. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press forward. And you know where we're going to end up? We're going to end up at Shalom. With nothing broken, broken and nothing missing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word today. We thank you for this word you gave me today, Lord. Again, didn't deliver it perfectly. But I tried to do what you laid on my heart. Now, Lord, you take the word that was ministered today and you cause understanding to come. You cause a revelation to come. You cause, uh, you cause light to come. Your word went forth. The entrance of it gives light and it gives understanding. So we pray that over your people. We commit your people unto you in the word of your grace, which is able to build them and give them inheritance among all who are sanctified. Now, Lord, we thank you for your people, both those who were here in this house today, those who joined us in live stream, those who may catch it later, whatever the case, your word is powerful. Your word has the power to transform lives. And so, Lord, we commit your people to it, and we give you thanks for it. And we speak shalom over your people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. amen. And amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be grace, mer merciful to you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and, here it is, give you peace. And that is shalom. Amen. Yes. amen. Greet one another today. Let your brothers and sisters, your family here know that you're glad they're here, and uh, we thank you for being here. We thank you for being there on the live stream as well. So the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.